Jordan Peterson was joined by philosopher Mohammed Hijab to explore a variety of subjects, including the traditionalist understanding of Islam, its meta narrative, and certain areas of agreement amongst the three Abrahamic religions. Author and philosopher Mohammed Hijab's primary areas of interest include political philosophy, philosophy of religion, and comparative religion. He interacts with well known philosophers and intellectuals from all around the world in an effort to promote a better understanding of Islam. I understand that, and I'm not even saying that there's something exceptional in that regard about Islam, although the rate at which it happened was quite remarkable. But it still, it presents us with a problem, doesn't it? I mean, everyone, it presents everyone with a problem. And the problem is, well, for example, the problem is reconciling the idea of turning the other cheek with the idea of a just war, a defensive war, or an expansive war for that matter. And of course that issue is relevant to Islam because Islam exploded outward and produced the biggest empire the world had ever seen in, in, the, in the space of a few short centuries. So then you, you ask, well, what's the spirit, what is the spirit that animated that? And is that attributable to okay. the, the Islamic doctrines themselves? Yes, I don't know the be. answer to that. Now, let me tell you the answer to that, okay? Islam has a, has a capability to be expansive, and it also has a capability of making peace treaties. And it does, and it should do, whatever's in its best interest just like every country should do whatever's in its best interest. The concept of peace is a central one in Islamic thought. The Arabic word salam most frequently used to connote peace, it shares its etymology with the name for the religion Islam itself. While well, peace, peaceableness, and peacemaking are essential ideas in Islam, the religion cannot be classified as pacifist in its core orientation. Let's listen to Jordan Peterson and Mohammed Hijab on this. Conflict or any of those things, and I mean this is a constant problem, and I would also say that given our technological mastery now, we really can't afford this anymore. We have to solve this problem of defensive war, expansive war, evangelical religion, you know, how to go about uni how to go about uniting us under some umbrella that isn't so vague that it means nothing, how to preserve our traditions from the past. And I can't see any better way than each of us trying to be shining exemplars of our tradition. And then letting that goodness shine forth in a way that people you may you may it may be the case that we'll find that the better we are, the more we're like each other. I mean, wouldn't that be a kind of union under something approximating God? That all good men could see in each other a reflection of something that was the highest? And yeah, that that could be compelling in and of itself? Absolutely. But I, I, people in the West must realize that Islam is fully capable of peace. This is what must be realized. How do we, how do we know that? It's not despite the Quran and the Sunnah or the sayings of the Prophet and the actions, but it's because of them. If you if you look at the Quran and you look at, for example, chapter four verse ninety, uh, or if you look at, for example, chapter one verse ninety, uh, chapter two verse one ninety, one ninety, you'll see that the the um, the Islamic commandments are clearly sometimes about defensiveness, but sometimes also clearly about um, about creating peace treaties. And this Treaty of Hudaybiyah is a bedrock example. We are so long as there's peace treaties, there is peace. And so in terms of Muslim countries, they can, can perpetually create peace treaties with other people. Peace is the pinnacle of the Muslim paradise. God is peace. While these verses treat spiritual ideals, they do have implications for the Quran's view of proper human behavior. The Quran clearly sees its depiction of heaven, in which there is no talk of sin, as a model for how people should behave in this life. Therefore, so you're willing to abide by a contract, even with Allah. people outside the faith? Yes. Especially with okay. people outside the faith. Why it's, especially? Why especially? Is that because, part of the tradition of hospitality in some yes, sense? Yes, because if, if you break a contract with a non-Muslim, then you're driving them away from Islam. Okay, so... Yes, that's definitely true. That's yeah, absolutely and so, definitely so remember, true. Islam is, Islam is a, attempts to attract people to its own religion. Commonality between liberal theory and Islam is contractarianism and contracts, consent. That is a clearest oh, yeah. thing because in, in liberal theory, you have the theory of consent. And in Islam, you have the same thing. Contracts are binding. One of the categories of zakat was money that you pay to non-Muslims so that they can feel comfortable and they can feel as if you're doing them a favor and there's relationships going on. It's a, it's a category. It is a category of zakat, which is one of the five pillars of Islam to, to give such money. So 
the fact that Islam states, oh, you who believe, fulfill your contracts. That is generic. That's, that people. means to abide by your word. So You have to so. stick by your word. No matter, for us, if you don't stick to your word, then this shows a lack of character. It shows that you, one of the signs of a hypocrite is that he goes against, a religious hypocrite. If he, if he makes a contract, he goes against it. It seems as one of the most despicable things. Upsetting, let's say, is the civil war in Islam. Yeah, well, yeah. The so, Prophet didn't tell people to fight each other. I mean, that fair, Islam fair enough. doesn't Look, say. Fair, it, Islam okay. doesn't say that. Islam doesn't say there should be a civil war. It's, in fact, it was predicted, but it was never encouraged. In fact, the Quran clearly encourages against civil war. Some Muslims who have carried out the name of Islam in a very aggressive way, just based on their own interpretation and their conscience. However, there are many verses in the Quran like, let religion only be for the sake of God. That's in chapter 2, verse 194 of the Quran. As well as there is, there should be no compulsion in religion. That's from chapter 2, verse 257 of the Quran. It also depends on what measurement you're going to use to determine what makes a religion peaceful or not. So trying to prove if it's a religion of peace, it actually limits the scope of the religion. Islam is like all other religions, it's a religion, period. And in the religion, there are teachings that promote peace and other things like love, how to manage money, and so on. And at the same time, passages in the Quran indicate that Islam had non-peaceful occurrences and events throughout history. Yeah, and oh, I would and say I, the same thing about Christianity in and relationship it gives us, by the, way, to the endless it gives Protestant us, and Catholic wars. It, Islam is categorically against civil war. Islam is uh, Islam is clearly for pluralism. It's not for compulsion. These misnomers and misconceptions must. Okay, so okay, so fair, fair enough. And yeah. as I said, I know that the Protestants and the Catholics were at each other's throats for years. And despite the fact that of there being no justification for that, let's say, or quite the contrary, in the Gospels, so it, this isn't a problem that's unique to Islam, but it is an ongoing problem in Islam. And it's not like there isn't sectarian strife in the West. I also understand that. And so that, that makes people watching the, the religious community say wary because, well, for obvious reasons. And so just because there's multiple interpretations of something, it doesn't mean that that thing is false. Like there may be multiple interpretations of the killing of JFK. It doesn't mean that JFK didn't get killed. People differ on things which, especially if there's a lot of those people, which there can be more than one interpretation about. It's not like it's obvious to me that the Christians have it right and the Jews and the Muslims have it wrong. And yes. so that's certainly not the case at an individual level. No, it's like no, it's way yeah. more complicated than that, way more. And so we're just not going to go for answers. If we go for answers like that, we're going to be at each other's throats. And how about we aren't? How about we're not? That's how about we make I... peace? Hey, and I so like you that. and I, we had a peaceful conversation, so good for us and hooray realize that okay islam is a religion not too dissimilar okay from the other previous dispensations as we would we would see it and that there are things that there's a flesh that joins these religions and also that peace is possible peace is good. possible well then let's let's yeah. see if we can be good enough people to actually want peace let's try and see what we can do all right man what are your thoughts on this let us know in the comments below and we'll see you next time on the channel bye